Welcome back, back Hustle, Hustle Tribe. Zing, zing, zing. Pew. I switched the sound up. <laughs> All right, this week we're doing something special. I'm giving away three secret ingredients that I actually use now to make my business a six-figure business. So I should have just changed the, the title, right, Just show? <laughs> three secret ingredients for an MLO to win in today's market. Winning right now. We're going to jump straight into it. So the first, these are the three things, and I'm going to explain it and go in depth. So make sure you watch the full thing so you can understand how I implement it, and I'll give you all my secrets. But before I do that, make sure you guys are subscribed. All right, so constant contact and connection is number one. Number two is going to be exceptional, exceptional <laughs> service and care. Not regular, except exceptional, exceptional. All right. Lastly, get help when you need it. That's very important. So work by referrals. If you guys don't know, most of my business comes from referrals. I don't really do ads. I don't do any kind of special marketing. Mostly like 90% of my business comes from referrals. I'm now Besides YouTube and TikTok. Yes. That's part of the, the other 5%. <laughs> Social media is my 5%. Um, 90% comes from referrals, 5%. Okocy, maybe more than 5% comes from social media and stuff like that. So let's say... 10 to 15? Yes, 10 to 15% from there. And I'm now starting to do Facebook ads. Okay. I tried it once or twice but never did it. But now I hired a company to actually do my Facebook ads. So if you see my Facebook ads, guys, make sure you like it. Matter of fact, don't like it because that might charge me. I think Facebook charges me <laughs> or something like that. So don't even click on it. Just go follow my YouTube. All right. So working by referrals is a big part of my business. So how do I do that? That's how I create my clients and my deals. The way I do it is by sending out cards, handwritten cards. People fail to realize how special it is to receive a card in the mail saying thank you for your birthday. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday to you. Thank you for the contact. Thank you for calling me. And just giving appreciation to people it resonates something in them when they get a card. And especially when it's random and they don't know it's coming, it's a lovely thing. So working by referrals. This goes out to your clients. It can go out to your past clients. It can go out to people you want to do business with who might not even know about you. And it can go out to people who could give you referral partners. Mm -hmm. Like, Jashelle's one of my referral partners because she does insurance. So if one of her clients is like, hey, I need a new insurance policy. I'm like, why? Because I'm switching banks. She might be like, oh, wait, why don't you have Malcolm give you a quote? Malcolm does mortgages. Let him see what he's doing. And then, you know, I get a refund. So these are actual incidents how I get my deals. So that's the first one. My One of my most important things here. So I'll put a star on that. Find more opportunities. There's opportunities everywhere. We just fail to realize they're in front of us mm -hmm. because we might be going through our own thoughts in our heads and stuff like that. But you all have businesses. There's a lot of businesses around us. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is speak to them and let them know, what do you do? Like, hey, if this is a coffee shop, for example, you're going to take your clients out to coffee anyway. Why don't you go to a local shop, speak to the owner and say, hey, I'm, I'm getting coffee, but I'm going to start bringing my clients here. Is that fine with you? And then tell them what you do. Maybe do a video with them. Bring them uh, some more business. What do you think the client is going to do? What do you think the customer is going to do? They're going to become your customer. The coffee <laughs> shop gonna becomes your customer. Becomes your client because you're giving him so much business. He's he going to recommend to know, you. He also is going to want to know what you're doing. Exactly. And why are you so good that you're coming in here with so many different you know, referrals? New faces, and, yeah. people who didn't know about. It. And then he becomes a referral partner. Just the same way you send him business, he's going to send you business. Mm -hmm. And this is how you grow your MLO business, especially starting off as a new loan officer. We don't meet, you don't know a lot of people. You have to go out and shake people's hands. Not hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> I'm Malcolm. I do mortgages. What do you do? What? You sell coffee? You do insurance? Wow, let's see how we can work together. And this is how you build your business and build your book of business. Right, Just so you yes, know about that. Definitely do. Book of business. Find more. Or I could have did. Well, the show could have wrote that. New opportunities. So, you want to find... That looks like... Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> don't make fun of my hand right here. New opportunities and more. And also, you don't want to forget about the ones that you currently have. So, when you have good referral partners, you thank them. You want to keep that line of communication. Well, like you said, with the cards, you send them the cards. You make sure that they know they're, they're on your mind. Exactly. And you appreciate them. It says constant. It doesn't say one time. Well, I think my book is done. Constant. Contact and connection. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm, I'm loving drawing on this board. Now, this is something that we do, and we're actually doing another one. 
if you're one of our clients, you know about this. Or if you're in the Marcel Minute. I'm like, Marcel Minute? Yes, yo. I'm so good tongue to eye. Tongue. <laughs> I can't speak. I'm going to just have the show finish the video and I'm going to do the recording. <laughs> so host a business mixer. What is a business mixer? It's when you get a group of businesses and you invite them. You don't care if they're construction, insurance, car dealerships, bakery. attorney, bakery, any kind of business. If you have a business in this area, please come out and let's shake hands. When we did our first mixer, well, not our first one, but when our mixers, I actually invited other loan officers mm -hmm. to the mixer because it wasn't about my business, your business. I wanted a group of like-minded people to get together in different fields and just connect and make friends, make relationships because at the end of the day, you can't do every deal. Mm -hmm. So if you can't do it, you give it to one of your friends and vice versa. And that's how you grow your business. Once again, working by referrals. I'm keep coming back to this. So hopefully you guys realize how important working by referrals is. I think this is one of the best. I've never given out so many keys in one video before. Drop those gems. I'm dropping them. I hope somebody's picking them up. I hope you guys watching on YouTube are picking up these gems. I have my basket. Is, Do the, you? Ooh, I like that. <laughs> this is how you're going to turn this a six-figure MLO business. Hopefully seven figures. I'll let you know next year we're going to turn this to a seven-figure MLO business using these same steps. So make sure you're watching because I don't want to hear, oh, Malcolm never helped me. He didn't give out the gems or give out the keys because I'm doing it right now. What'd you show? Exceptional service and care. Boom. So number one, education. You have to be educating yourself, but also the clients. You want them to understand why you're going FHA, why you're doing a VA loan, why you're doing a conventional. You want them to understand. So at the end of the day, I always tell my clients, you don't have to use me. But if you come to me, I'm going to make sure you know more than you did before. Mm -hmm. Whether you use someone else, that's, that's up to you and your prerogative. I hope you come back to me because I, I want your business, but you don't have to. I'm just going to make sure you know more so you're in a better position to make sure you win. Because at the end of the day, I'm happy as long as you're happy. Yep. So you want to make sure you're educating them. Then you want communication. You want them to know, hey... Every Wednesday, I text all my clients and I follow up on the deal. So if you don't hear me from me from the beginning of the week until Wednesday, that's normal. You want them to understand what your process is. How do you want to communicate with them? How often you communicate with your clients? Because not every deal, you need to communicate with them every day. Sometimes you might only speak to them once a week. Or you might do every Saturday, you do your follow-up calls. The same thing with your realtors and your attorneys. Communicate them how often you follow up. When do you want to call? When do you speak with them? What times or what days? Mm -hmm. I'm too loud? Too fast. Oh, okay. Slow down. <sighs> when do you want to communicate with them? Yeah, how so often annoying. do you want to communicate with them? And just let them know what's going on. Because at the end of the day, without proper communication, you end up in a quarrel, right, Jashel? Pretty much. Yeah, Jashel, like you start working on that communication? Yep, yep. <laughs> Don't want no back and so, so you want to work on your communication. Follow through. If you tell them, hey, I communicate every Wednesday, you better be make damn skippy. Like that one? That you follow up every Wednesday. You don't want to say, oh, hey, I follow up every Wednesday. And then Wednesday come, and you don't follow up. And you're calling them on, on Friday afternoon. Exactly. When at they're 6.30. Off, and they say, wait, why are you calling now? They're thinking mm -hmm. it's an emergency. I'm like, oh, no, I'm just following up. That's not good. So make sure you follow through with when and how you say you're going to communicate. Mm -hmm. If you're going to communicate by text, Make sure you follow through with that. If they say, hey, no, I'd rather a phone call, make sure you follow through with the phone call. Whatever you guys agree with, please follow through with it. And that's how you give them... Exceptional service and care. I like this. Lastly, the, one of the most important things that people... I guess we have the issue of asking for help, but you have to get help when you need it. And if you guys are watching this YouTube video, that means you already took the first step of getting help. You realize, hey, I need to learn more. I need to become better as a loan officer. And one of the ways I'm going to do that is by watching YouTube, watching the real Mr. Marcel, the one of the top loan officers in the United States, you know, watching my YouTube <laughs> to help you. And if you guys want to take it further, you know, always click the link in my bio and schedule a one-on-one -on -one call with me and I'll give you more guidance. So ask your relationship for help. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, Malcolm, who am I asking? You're asking the same referral partners, your same clients. If you're going through something in your business, say you need more sellers, you say, hey, um, when you're on your phone with them, because you should be calling your clients more than once, right? Yep. You call them uh, either weekly, monthly, however you follow up through with your communication. Quarterly. Whatever you do, just make sure they'll be hearing, they need to hear from you. 
you ask them, hey, yeah, I'm going through a, a downtime. I don't have enough sellers. I'm sorry, sellers. I don't have enough buyers, people looking to buy houses right now. I don't have enough people who are looking for refunds. Do you know anyone? And you'll be sure that if you've been communicating with them, sending them thank you cards, calling them, checking up on them, I bet you they'll have a friend of a friend or someone they know they spoke with who is actually interested in buying a house, doing a refi or something like that. So this is how you get better, more business by asking what they say, closed mouths don't get fed. Yeah. Like the people on our YouTube, the ones who put comments in and they ask questions. What do we end up doing? We either do a video or answer them right there, but they ask for help. And if you ask, you shall receive. Mm -hmm. Now, leverage another MLO. This is, has a lot of controversy because as MLOs, we want to do all the business, all the deals. But at the end of the day, sometimes it's just too many deals for you to do. So what do you do? You have a partnership with someone in your office or something like that. You bring it to your broker and say, hey, I am have an overflow of deals. Can I give you some deals? And would you mind giving me a point or something off of it, a point five, whatever you guys work out between yourselves. And as long as it's compliance issues, I'm not trying to break any compliance laws. But see if you can work out a deal where you can give your referrals to other people in the office who can help you and leverage their time so you can get more done. Uh -huh. Of course, the, the clients are still going to want to make sure you follow up and you know what's going on with the foul because at the end of the day, they came to you, uh -huh. but you're leveraging other people's time so you can get more stuff done because at the end of the day, you can't do it all by yourself. That's why you need a team around you who's going to able to help you. I need to turn my head. No, you're good. Oh, the show was like turning, so I'm making sure. All right, lastly, before I go, lastly, this is like a really good key. And if you watch this to the end, I appreciate you. Please check out my other videos on the channel because we give a lot more advice on how to become a better loan officer. All right, hire someone, get help. Do not be cheap. We know a couple cheap people, yourself, <coughs> people. we're not going to say names, who are doing wonderful in the business, but they could do so much more if they would just get help. You can't be afraid to hire help because helping, when you find the right employee, or we don't say employee team member, or, yeah. they're going to double and triple what you pay them. So if you pay them $2,000 a month, they're going to bring you in at least $6,000, $7,000. The right person will make your business tenfolds. Well, four to 6000 double or triple. Yeah. How much you're bringing in. Because at the end of the day, they're helping to grow your business. They understand. It does take a little time. Don't get me wrong. You're First not going to hire me. them on, on Monday and, and see a boost in your bank account on Thursday. Yes, but... it does take some time, but they take off a lot of stress. And if you train them properly and you leverage their time and their knowledge, they will become walking billboards or raving fans of you mm -hmm. because they understand what you're doing. They understand what you're working with and they know how to help you. And especially when you teach them how to be leaders, they start doing things that you didn't even think of. Like, wow, I didn't know how I needed to get that. Like, yeah, no worry. I took care of you, Malcolm. Mm -hmm. Let's go. What else is next? And then before you know it, you have a whole you, but just a different version or in a different field or whatever. Like they might be your marketing you and they're thinking about things you can they can do to get you more business and more traffic. And the reason why they do it is because they see something in you and they believe in you. So they're investing their time to make sure you're better. And what do you do? Any good boss, any good supervisor, any good team member, they make sure that their team member is good. So if they're bringing you team business. Team member is what? Good. Okay. Uh, I'm speaking fast again. Uh, um, I don't know what that was. But... <laughs> I'm starting to mumble again. <laughs> you know, I actually had someone on YouTube said, hey, I wanted to watch your video, but uh, you were talking too fast, so I couldn't really understand what you were saying. Yeah. So I do apologize, guys. I'm still working on this speech thing. He's transferring over from TikTok, and TikTok now you can record longer videos, but before it was the 15 to 60 seconds. So he would have to get all of this into his 60 second take, so... Think, I think you're doing pretty good. You I'm know, still working on it. And I'm going to be taking speech classes so I can learn to speak more fluently. That's further. another thing with your ex exceptional service and care. Exceptional. So, yes. you guys see, better. We follow the, I follow the same rules that I'm giving you guys. I follow, I hold myself to the same standards because I want to be better. And I want to give my clients the best version of me. Same thing. I want to give Michelle the best version of me. Aww. So, when you work on this communication, this is what I've been working on it doesn't get easy guys i trust me it's not easy sometimes you get upset when you're trying to do a video and you're thinking you're doing it and it just shows like no you're talking too fast but this is real this is how you become better this is how you become a better loan officer by taking the advice of people you trust and you care about and learning how to get better asking for help 
hiring someone and following through. If they tell you you need to slow down, you have to work on slowing down. Educating yourself. These are all things that we're doing. We're constantly going to new meetings. We just came back from, we're not going to say where, but we came back from, um, what was those, those the show that we went to? The workshops. Oh, like, what show? <laughs> I don't remember going to a show. We came back from a workshop where we met Grant Cardone. Um, we met other some other big big people in the sales industry. And all it is is learning to be around these people, learning how to speak and to sell. All equates to making sure you're better, making sure you're better for your clients. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you think or how much you think you should get paid. It's going to be the value that you give determines how much money you get. Mm -hmm. The marketplace determines you. So if you have a good social media, if you have a good, you're giving your clients a lot, you're, they see that you care, you're helping, your communication, your sales, your value is going to be a lot more in that marketplace versus an MLO who doesn't do all that. An MLO who's like, oh, blah, 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 blah. they're not going to have the same value in the marketplace as you. So. Yeah. That's it. There's a lot more we want to say, but I'm going to stop it video here because I feel like that was like some deep stuff and I want you to ponder and think about that. <laughs> like an old wise man. If you didn't know, now you know. It's the real Mr. Marcel, a.k.a. your favorite loan officer. Bow.